Because you'll have bad times, but that'll always wake you up to the good stuff you weren't paying attention to. And you don't regret meeting your wife? Why? Because the pain I feel now? Oh, I got regrets, Will, but I don't regret a single day I spent with her. So when did you know, like, that she was the one for you? October 21st, 1975. Jesus Christ, you know the fucking day? Heck oh, yeah. Because yeah. it was game six of the World Series. Oh. Biggest game in Red Sox history? Yeah, sure. My friends and I had slept out on the sidewalk all night to get tickets. You got tickets? Yep. Day of the game. We're sitting in a bar waiting for the game to start, and in walks this girl. It was an amazing game, though. You know, bottom of the eighth, Carbo ties it up at a 6-6. It went to 12. Bottom of the 12th, in stepped Carlton Fisk. Activates. Steps up to the plate. So much. Yeah, yeah. He clocks it. He you really know. does. High five ball on the left field line. 35,000 people on Could've their feet. Stories. Yelling at the ball, but that's not because Fisk, he's waving at the ball like a man. Yeah. And 35,000 fans, you know, they charge the field, you know? Yeah, and wow. he's fucking bowling. Oh, no, he's like, oh, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. I can't fucking believe you had tickets in that fucking game. Yeah. Did you rush the field? Uh, no, I didn't rush the fucking field. I wasn't there. What? No, I was in a bar having a drink with my future wife. You missed Pudge Fist's home run? Oh, yeah. To have a fucking drink with some lady you never met? Yeah, but you should have seen her. She was a stunner. I don't care if Oh, fucking... no, no, she lit up the room. I don't Ooh. care if Helena Troy walks oh, into the Helena room. That's Troy. game six. No, oh, she... my God. And who are these fucking friends of yours? They let you get away with that? <gasps> they had to. And what, what did you say to them? I just slid my ticket across the table, and I said, sorry, guys, I got to see about a girl. I gotta go see about a girl? Yeah. That's what you said? And they let you get away with that? Oh, yeah, they saw in my eyes that I meant it. You're oh, kidding. Love. No, I'm not kidding you, Will. That's why I'm Passion. not talking right now about some girl I saw at a bar 20 years ago and how I always regretted not going over and talking to her. I don't regret the 18 years I was married to Nancy. I don't regret the six years I had to give up counseling when she got sick. And I don't regret the last years when she got really sick. And I sure as hell don't regret missing a damn game. That's regret. Wow. Would have been nice to catch that game, though. I didn't know Pudge was going to hit a home run. <laughs> what if I said I would not sleep with you again until you let me meet your friends? Like 4.30 in the morning, they're probably up. Oh, my God. Men are shaming. If you're not thinking with your wiener, then you're acting directly on its butt. Who's that? Okay, hey, Chuck. No, not good. Go back to sleep. I'll look it up. That's the same thing that told you you was going to play in the NBA. Well, exactly. So look out. You better start buying some season tickets. Uh, <laughs> I, I plan to. I'm tall. I like wearing. Hook, dunk, dunk. Not that tall. He's hiding the fact that all of his brothers are people he met <laughs> and his friends. But like, yeah, he can't show. Guy, like, yeah. Fucking all bombed and drinking. I know, Morgan. It's a real rarity we'd be all drinking. You know, my uncle Marty drinks. Like, I'm going to Bender for six, eight months. Yeah. Ever tell you what happened to him when he was driving up there and he got pulled over? I told you guys, right? Well, my uncle Marty. Yeah, yeah. Tell you, but we may tell you what happened to my uncle Marty because just probably meeting well, his friends. Yes, I have like the floor a lot now. Of stories. Um, yeah, my uncle Marty's driving home. A story right? tell. Bombed out of his tree, right? Just hammered out of his gourd. Just cracked. The state trooper uh, sees him and pulls him over. So my uncle's fucked, basically. So he's about to throw the cuffs on him and put him in jail. And all of a sudden, 50 yards down the road, there's this huge fucking boom, right? So Stady gets real spooked and he turns around. He got shot? No, some. No. some <laughs> uh, what's the story you have, Marty? Some other guy's car had hit a tree, okay? There was an accident. Stay here. Don't move. So Stady goes running down the road to deal with the other accident. Uncle starts wondering what he's doing there. Gets up, gets in his car, and just drives home. The next morning, my uncle's just passed out. And he hears this knocking at the door. So he goes downstairs. I can pull the door over. What? It's the state trooper that pulled him over. He's like, bitch, I never seen you before in my life. I've been home all night with my kids. I don't know who the fuck you are. He's like, you know who I am. Let me get in your garage. I was like, what? He's like, you heard me. Let me get in your garage. I was like, all right, fine. Takes him out of the garage, opens the door, and there's <laughs> the Stady's police cruiser in my uncle's garage. <laughs> and was, he was so fucking hammered, he drove the wrong car home. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the best part about it is, yeah. <laughs> stage. Holy I'm shit. I was so embarrassed. He didn't do anything. He'd been driving around all night in my uncle's Chevelle, looking for the house. It's a funny story. Away. Morgan, let's see if you can get this one. I've got a little story for you. <laughs> all right. There's an old couple in bed. Mary and Paddy, and they wake up on the morning of their fiftieth anniversary. I want to give you a little present. Anything your little heart desires, I'm going to give it to you. What would you like? Paddy's like, God, hey, Mary, that's a very sweet offer. Now, <clears throat> in 50 years, there's one thing that's been missing, and uh, I would like you to give me a blowjob. <laughs> I would like one. And Mary's like, she takes the teeth out, puts them in the glass, and she gives him a blowjob. And afterwards, Paddy's like, 
Jeez. Now that's what I've been missing. That was the most beautiful, earth-shattering thing ever. Beautiful, Mary, I love you. Is there anything that I can do for you? Mary looks up at him and she goes, do it again. Oh, oh, my, oh my God. God. <laughs> no, not that full. I've never felt you. <laughs> Off of me. Take it easy. Oh, right. Slowly oh, back on, away. Hey, brother. I don't know what you're doing, dude. You're giving us a ride. Okay. It's, it's real Just because you don't have to sleep in your one-room palace right. tonight. Don't start right. thinking you're bad. Hey, okay. wait a minute. You said we were going to see your place. No, not tonight. Oh, no. Not tonight. Not any other night, honey. He knows once you see that little shithole, he's going to drop like a bad habit. Fuck one to meet your brothers. No, we're going to do that another time. The stewardess hit and goes hauling ass down the aisle. And I yell, don't forget the coffee. Oh, shit. You didn't say that. For Christ's sake, buddy, it's a joke. You was joking to Will. Will was trying to keep that secret. And then his friend, I'm assuming, Tim, caught on that he was keeping that a secret. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Mm. Nice to meet you. Can I get your beer? Pickled eggs. French for club soda. Club soda, yeah. 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 A couple of sandwiches, too. Sure. Put on my tag. You have a plan on paying your tab? Mm. Yeah, Chief. Got the winning lottery ticket right here. What's the jackpot? Twelve million. I don't Woo. think that'll cover it. Yeah, but it'll cover your sex change operation. I talk about Will. Oh, it seems to be going well. I think so. Have you talked to him at all about his future? No, we haven't gotten into that yet. He's still banging away at the past. Why his future? Well, maybe you should. My phone's been ringing. Because this guy wants him okay. for the math part. It's great that they're offers, but I, I don't really think he's ready for that. So, from my understanding, he has Will's sure you understand, Sean. good intentions, and he just has on? what he's going to He wants get out to use him. him for the math. So you don't get sticky fingers. Tim, can you help us? We're trying to settle a bet. Uh oh. You ever heard of Jonas Salk? Sure, killed polio. You've heard of Albert Einstein? How about Gerald Lambeau? Ever heard of him? No. Oh. Thank you, Tim. So who won the bet? I did. How did he this win the bet? I don't understand. Sean. His name is Gerald Lambeau. I'm nothing compared to this young man. He's saying, my name doesn't mean Who's anything. I'm trying Lambeau. to make oh, this make something of him? Oh, make something of him? Yes. Of professors renowned for their study of the universe, but it was, a, it was a 26 year old Swiss patent clerk doing physics in his spare time who changed the world. Can you imagine if Einstein would have given that up just to get drunk with his buddies in Vienna every night? We all would have lost something. Tim would never have heard him. Pretty dramatic, Jerry. No, it isn't, Sean. This boy has that gift. He just hasn't got the direction, but we can give that to him. Hey, Jerry, in the 1960s, there was a young man graduating He's looking up for him, though. Michigan. And, and you're pushing just to get what you want. Specifically bounded I mean, harmonic functions. he wants him to he do to something with his life, professor. which is showed amazing potential. Then he moved to Montana good and he thing, blew the competition away. He wants him yes, to be better was. first. Ted Kaczynski. I have heard him. Hey, Timmy, who's Ted Kaczynski? Beautiful. That's exactly what I'm talking about. We got to give this kid direction. He can contribute to the world, and, and we can help him do that. Direction's one thing, manipulation's another. Well, right. Sean, have to let him find. Sean, his own. I'm not sitting at home every night twisting my mustache and hatching a hatching a plan to ruin this boy's life. I was doing advanced mathematics when I was, and it's above personal right. Yeah, but you minute, you don't have to write. Let's talk about the boy. Why don't we give him like, time to figure out what he wants? That's a one. Like he's the right meaning to it. He's wonders for you, didn't it? Yeah, it did you arrogant fucking prick. He's well, completely sorry. okay with him that I getting to that point. He just wants him to, to keep you the loop. be better be the loop. first. The boy's in a meeting right now. I set up for him over at McNeil. That is all. Well, Will, uh, I'm not exactly sure what you mean. We've already offered you a position. Nobody in this town works without a retainer, guys. You think you can find somebody who does, we tell you you have my blessing. Nicely. But I think we all know that person's not going to represent you as well as I can. Will, our offer is $84,000 a year. Retainer. Plus Retainer. Allegedly, your situation would be concurrently improved if I had $200 in my back pocket right now. <laughs> well, I don't think I, I can. Uh, uh, Larry? I've got uh, $73. Will you take a check? Let me tell you something. You're suspect. I don't know what your reputation is in this town. But after the shit you tried to pull today, you can bet I'll be looking into you. He went to an interview for him. And he, like, scammed these guys of their money. How's it going? Fine. Oh. Good. You want some help? No. Come on, give me one little peek. No. We'll the it is actually important that I learn this. Yeah. Oh, why don't we just hang out here all day? Yes, why don't we? 
Seeing as you're intent on breaking my balls. Let me ask you a question. All right. Oh, do you have a photographic memory? I don't know. I just kind of remember, you know? I mean, how do you remember your phone number? You know, you just do. <laughs> well, have you studied organic chemistry? A little bit. Oh, just for fun. Nobody studies it for fun. It's not a necessity, especially for someone like you. Someone like me? Yeah, someone who divides their time fairly evenly between batting cages and bars. I would hardly say it was a necessity. <laughs> You know, there are very smart people here at Harvard, and even they have to study because this is really hard, and yet you do it so easily, I don't understand. I, I, I don't understand how your mind works. Did you play the piano? I want to talk about this. No, so... I'm trying to explain it to you. Do you play the piano? Yeah, a bit. All right, so when you, when you look at a piano, you see Mozart. I see chopsticks. All right, well, Beethoven, OK? He looked at a piano, and it just made sense to him. He could just play. So what are you Chopsticks saying? Chopsticks is like no, not a lick. A, like, I look testing at the piano, the piano. I see a bunch music. of keys, three pedals, and a box of wood. But Beethoven, like Mozart, your... they saw it. They could just play. I couldn't paint you a picture. I probably can't hit the ball out of Fenway. I can't play the piano. But you can do my outcome paper in under an hour. Right. Well, I mean, when it came to stuff like that, I could always just play. That's the best I can explain. Come here. I have to. He's. Huh? I have to tell you something. Oh. Well. Well, that was quite important. Yeah. It was. Now back to studying. Are you the study Nazi? It's not no, fair. What's not fair? What? I've been here for four years, and I've only just found you. Well, come to California with me. What? I want you to come to California with me. Are you sure about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but how do you know? I don't know. I just know. Because that's a really serious thing you say. I mean... I know. You could be in California next week, and you know you might find out something about me you don't like, and you know maybe you wish you hadn't said that. But, well, you know, he's it's freaking a serious out. thing that you can't take it back, and now I'm stuck in California. If someone doesn't really want to be with me, just wish they had a take back. Oh, what? I don't want to take back. Well, I can't go to California. Why not? It is. Oh, it is a big ask. I, I got oh. a job here, but and two because I live here. He's also. Look, um, doesn't want to commit because if you don't love me, you should just tell me I'm because it's such I don't a love you. Why? He's afraid that she's Why going to. What are you so scared of? Ditch him. What am I so scared of? Well, what aren't you scared of? You live in the safe little world where no one challenges you, and you're scared shitless um, to do don't, anything don't, else. Because don't that tell me about my world. Don't tell me about my world. I mean, you just want to have your little fling with like the guy from the other side of town. Then you're gonna go off to Stanford. You're gonna marry some rich prick who your parents will approve of, and just sit around with the other trust fund babies and talk about how you went slumming too once. Why are you saying this? Yeah. What is your obsession with this money? My father died when I was thirteen, and I inherited this money. That I would give it back in a second if it meant I could have one more day with him. But I can't. Then that's my life and I deal with it. So don't put your shit on me when you're the one that's afraid. I'm afraid. What, what, what am I afraid of? What the fuck am I afraid of? You're afraid of? of me. You're afraid that I won't love you back. You know what? I'm afraid too. Fuck it. I want to give it a shot. And at least I'm honest with you. I'm not honest with you? No, what about your 12 brothers? No, you're not going. You're not leaving. What do you want to know? What? That I don't have 12 brothers? Yeah. That I'm a fucking orphan? No, you don't want to hear I that. I didn't know no, that. No, you don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that I got it. fucking cigarettes put out of me when I was a little kid. I didn't know. That this isn't fucking surgery, that the motherfucker stabbed me. You don't want to hear that shit, Skylar. Oh, you you don't tell that. me you want to hear that I shit. I want to hear it because I want to help you because I help want to be with you. Help me? What the fuck? What do I got? A fucking sign on my back that says save me? No. Do I look like I need that? No, God, I just want to be with don't you because I love you. Don't bullshit me. Don't you fucking bullshit me. I love you, but I hear you say that you don't love me. Because if you say that, then I won't call you. And I won't be in your life. You just exploded. He doesn't mean that. He's being defensive. Again. Partly he, he doesn't want to deal with his issues, and partly he doesn't want to drop his issues on her. Which is defensive and both. I know, but he... He also doesn't want to deal with it himself, let alone let other people deal with it oh, for him. Never He's not ready to deal with it. He's facing all these things, like, they don't find teachers through his reason. counselor and they all of that stuff. Stupid. And he's, it's I like, really very present doing. now. So he There's can't hide from it. But he, he still can't figure out a way to deal with it. Hello, Will? He has all this shit going on in his Tom, life, so he's like, trying to deal with the past by and moving on at the same time is not. He has to do... He has to do... Like, simplify it. 
Nothing's really simple for him, to be honest. He has to deal with the past right. first to move on. You see, you used McLaurin. He can't do anything else. Yeah, I don't know what this guy is trying to get him to move on. He can't. Do you ever consider? I'm pretty sure it's right. Hey, look, can we do this at Sean's office from now on? Because I. But did you think of the possibility? That's right. Let's right. take it home with you. He's over him. What happened it's at just... the McNeil meeting? I couldn't go. I had a date, so uh, so I sent my chief negotiator. On your own time, you can do whatever you like, Will. Wait, wait, wait. When I set up a meeting, he has about his interview, with right? Associates. Yeah. His friend who, yeah. who dressed up and that was. Set up any more meetings. Well, okay. Yeah. okay. Now that makes sense to me. Now, okay. I'll give you a job myself. I just wanted you to see what was out there. Look, maybe I don't want to spend the rest of my fucking life sitting around explaining shit to people. I think you could show me some appreciation. A little appreciation. Do you know how easy this is for me? Do you have any fucking idea how easy this is? This is a fucking joke. And I'm sorry you can't do this. I really am, because I wouldn't have to fucking sit here and watch you fumble around and fuck it up. And you'd have more time to sit around. You should be the bloody teacher. Than, you're right. This is probably a total waste of my time. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you're right, Will. I can't do this, bro. But you can, and when it comes to that, it's only but... It's just a handful of people in the world who can tell the difference between you and me. But I'm one of them. Sorry. Yeah, so am I. Most days I wish I never met you. Oh my god, like he doesn't need him to tell him that. I didn't, I didn't have to walk around with the knowledge that there was someone like you out there. I, I didn't have to watch you throw it all away. Oh, you had to wait for him to freaking close the darn damn door to say that. Morgan, if you're watching pornos in my mom's room again, I'm gonna give you a fucking beat. What's up, fellas? I'm gonna do, why don't you jerk off in your own fucking house, dude? That's fucking filthy. I'll go to the VCR on my house. Come on, not in my glove. That's my little league glove. My little league. What do you want me to do? I mean, what's wrong with you? You hump a baseball glove? I didn't, I, didn't, I just used it for the, for cleanup. <laughs> Stop oh, jerking my. off in my mother's room. Is there another VCR in the house? It's just sad, bro. So why do you think I should work for the National Security Agency? Well, you'd be working on the cutting edge. You'd be exposed to the kind of technology that you wouldn't see anywhere else because we've classified it. Oh, come on. I mean, that is what you do. You guys handle 80% of the intelligence workload. You're seven times the size of the CIA. So the way I see it, the question isn't why should you work for the NSA? Why shouldn't you? Why shouldn't I work for the NSA? It's a tough one. <laughs> But I'll take a shot. Say I'm working at the NSA and somebody puts a code on my desk, something no one else can break. Maybe I take a shot at it and maybe I break it. And I'm real happy with myself because I did my job well. But maybe that code was the location of some rebel army in North Africa or the Middle East. And once they have that location, they bomb the village where the rebels are hiding. 1,500 people that I never met, never had no problem with, get killed. Now the politicians are saying, oh, send in the Marines to secure the area because they don't give a shit. It won't be their kid over there getting shot, just like it wasn't them when their number got called because they were all pulling a tour in the National Guard. It'll be some kid from Southie over there taking shrapnel in the ass. He comes back to find that the plan he used to work at got exported to the country he just got back from, and the guy who put the shrapnel in his ass got his old job because he'll work for 15 cents a day and no bathroom breaks. Meanwhile, he realizes the only reason he was over there in the first place was so that we could install a government that would sell us oil at a good price. And, of course, the oil companies use a little skirmish over there to scare up domestic oil prices. A cute little ancillary benefit for them, but it ain't helping my buddy at two fifty a gallon. They're taking their sweet time bringing the oil Holy back. Of course, smokes. maybe they even took the liberty of hiring an alcoholic skipper who likes to drink martinis and fucking play slalom with the icebergs. It ain't too long till he hits one, spills the oil, and kills all the sea life in the North Atlantic. So now my buddy's out of work. He can't afford to drive, so he's walking to the fucking job like, interviews, which sucks because making up a whole thing. He's giving him chronic hemorrhoids, and meanwhile he's starving because every time he tries to get a bite to eat, the only blue plate special they're serving is North Atlantic scrod with Quaker State. So what did I think? I'm holding out for something better. I figure, fuck it, while I'm at it, why not just shoot my buddy, take his job, give it to his sworn enemy, hike up gas prices, bomb a village, club a baby seal, hit the hash pipe, and join the National Guard. I could be elected president. You feel like you're alone, Will? What? Do you have a soulmate? He wanted a good synopsis of the... Uh, Somebody who challenged... Geopolitics in the last half century? Chucky. You know, Chucky's family, he'd lie down in fucking traffic for you. And I'm talking about someone who opens up things for you, touches your soul. I got, I got, who? I got plenty. Well, name them. Shakespeare, Nietzsche, Frost, O'Connor, Kant, Pope, Locke. That's great. They're all dead. Not to me, they're not. You don't have a lot of dialogue with them. You can't give back to them, Will. Not without some yeah. serious smelling salts and a heater. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 
You'll never have that kind of relationship in a world where you're always afraid to take the first step because all you see is every negative thing 10 miles down the road. You gonna take the professor's side don't on this? Don't give me a line of shit, no. Look, I didn't want the job. It's not about the job. I don't care if you work for the government. But you can do anything you want. You are bound by nothing. What are you passionate about? What do you want? I mean, the guys who work their entire life laying bricks so their kids have a chance at the opportunities you have here. I didn't ask for this. No. You were born with it, so don't cop out behind. I didn't ask for this. What do you mean, cop out? I mean, what's wrong with laying brick? Nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. So that's somebody's home I'm building. Right. My dad laid brick, okay? Busted his ass so I can have an education. Exactly. That's an honorable profession. What's wrong with, with fixing somebody's car? Someone will get to work the next day because of me. Yeah, there's honor will. in that. Yeah, there is. Well, there is honor in that. And there's honor in, you know, taking that 40-minute train ride so those college kids can come in in the morning and the floors are clean and the wastebaskets are empty. That's real work. That's right. Right. And that's honorable. I'm sure that's why you took that job. I mean, for the honor of it. I just have a little question here. You could be a janitor anywhere. Why did you work at the most prestigious technical college in the whole why fucking world? Why did he choose that? Why did you sneak like around to and finish other people's formulas that only one or two people in the world could do? He knows. He has such an intellectual brain. Why did he choose? Because I don't see a lot of honor in that, Will. Yeah, like he said, he did it on purpose. So what do you really want to do? He didn't pick that job. I want to be a shepherd. Really? I want to move up to Nashua, get a nice little spread. Get some sheep and tend to them. Maybe you should go do that. You know, if you're gonna jerk off, why don't you just do it at home with a moist towel? You chucking me? Yeah, get the fuck hey, out. No, no, no. Time's not up yet. Yeah, it I'm is. I'm not leaving. No. Listen, you're not gonna answer my questions. You're wasting my fucking time. What? I thought we were friends. What do you mean? You... Playtime's over. Okay. Well, why are you kicking me out, Sean? I mean, what? I mean, you're lecturing me on life. Look at you, you fucking burnout. What winds your clock? Where's your soulmate? You want to yeah. talk about soulmates? Where is she? Dead. That's right, she's fucking dead, she fucking dies, and you just cash in your chips and you walk away? Hey, at least I played a hand. Oh, and you played a hand and you lost. You lost a big fucking hand, and some people will lose a big hand like that and have the sack to ante up again. Look at me, what do you want to do? Come on, just say it. What do you want to do? You bullshit. He doesn't know. You got a bullshit answer for everybody, but I ask you a very simple question, and you can't give me a straight answer, because you don't know. See you, Bobby. Fuck you. You're the shepherd. Did he just give up on him? I just wanted to, you know, uh, call you up uh, before you left. Yeah. You trying to make amends? I love you. Well. Take care. Someone's always coming around here. He's still. He's being challenged. To figure out how he's gonna move on from the past. He just doesn't know. He doesn't. He doesn't know how to. There's a missing piece. He just doesn't know. Really she thinks he's coming, doesn't she? Yeah. But he's not. What are you thinking, Will? Come on. An hour and ten minutes late. Well, if he doesn't show up and I file a report saying he wasn't here and he goes back to jail, it won't be on my conscience. <laughs> okay. I wish I knew what he said. So, what do you think he said? Because I don't know. something shut him up. Yeah, I wish I knew. So how's your lady? Ah, she's gone. Gone? Gone where? Uh, med school? Medical school in California? Really? Yeah. What was this? It's like a week ago. That sucks. You're like his best friend, and that's all you have to say. So, uh, when are you done with those meetings? He doesn't tell anybody. Yeah, fucking sit in a room. How is he supposed to know? For the next fifty years. Uh, Played it off as nothing. Shit, He's like Wanna acting like it's no big him. deal, but it is a big deal. But he doesn't know that. You know, be neighbors. You know, we'll have little kids. Fucking take them a little league together up Foley Field. Look, you're my best friend, so don't take this the wrong way. In Twenty years, if you're still living here. Coming over my house to watch the Patriots game, still working construction. I'll fucking kill you. That's not a threat. What? That's a fact. I'll fucking kill you. What the fuck are you talking about? You got something none of us. Oh come on. Why, why is it always this? I mean, I fucking owe it to myself to do this. Or that. What if I don't no, want to? No, no, no. Oh, fuck you. You don't owe it to yourself. You owe it to me. Cause tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and I'll be fifth, and I'll still be doing this shit. That's all right. That's fine. I mean, you're sitting on a winning lottery ticket. You're too much of a pussy to cash it in. And that's bullshit. Cause I'd do fucking anything to have what you got. It'd be an insult to us if you're still here in 20. Hanging around here is a fucking waste of your time. You don't know that. I don't? No. You don't know that. No, I don't know that. Let me tell you what I do. Every day I come by your house and I pick you up. And we go out, we have a few drinks and a few laughs and it's great. You know what the best part of my day is? For about 10 seconds from when I pull up to the curb when I get to your door. Cause I think maybe I'll get up there and I'll knock on the door and you won't be. No goodbye, no see you later, no nothing. Just left. I don't know much, but I know that. Yep. 
So he wants him to leave this behind. He doesn't want him to do... Like, he knows how smart he is. He doesn't want him to do this forever. And waste he wants what to be, he got. to be better. Yeah. I brought you in here because I wanted you to help him. He wants him to succeed. Not to run him out. I know what I'm doing with the boy. I don't care if you have a rapport with the boy. I don't care if you have a few laughs, even at my expense, but don't you dare undermine what I'm trying to do here. Undermine. This boy is at a fragile point right now. I do understand. And he is at a fragile point, okay? He's got problems. Well, what problems does he have, Sean? That he's better off as a janitor? That he's better off in jail? Better off hanging out with a bunch of retarded gorillas? Oh, why do you think he does that, Jerry? Do you have any fucking clue why? Hmm? He can handle the problems. He can handle the work, and he obviously handled you. Jerry, listen to me. Listen. Why is he hiding? Why doesn't he trust anybody? Because the first thing that happened to him, he was abandoned by the people who were supposed to love him the oh, most. Oh, come on. Don't give me that Freud. Oh, no, right. listen no, to him. And why does he hang out with those retarded gorillas, as you call them? Because any one of them, if he asked them to, would take a fucking bat to your head, okay? That's called loyalty. Yeah, that's very touching. Yeah. And who's he handling? He's he pushes people away before they have a chance the to leave who... him. It's a defense mechanism, all right? And for 20 years, he's been alone because of that. Who he knows will be loyal It's going to be the same thing all over again, and I'm not going to let that happen to him. And if you're angry at me for being being successful, for being what you could have been, Sean... I'm not angry at you, Jeff. Oh, yes, you're angry at me, Sean. You resent me, but I'm not going to apologize for any, any success I've had. You're angry at me for doing what you could have done, but ask yourself, Sean. Ask yourself if you want Will to feel that way. If you want him to feel like a failure. Oh, you arrogant shit. That's why I don't come to the goddamn reunions. Because I can't stand that look in your eye. You know, that condescending, embarrassed oh, look. Sure. You think I'm a failure. I know who I am. And I'm proud of what I do. It was a conscious choice. I didn't fuck up. And you and your cronies think I'm some sort of pity case. You and your kiss-ass chorus following you around going to the Fields Medal, the Fields Medal. Why are you still so fucking <laughs> afraid of failure? It's about my medal, is it? Oh, God, I can go home and get it for you. You can have it. Oh, please don't. You're, that. You know what, Jerry? Shove the medal up your fucking ass, all right? Yeah. Because I don't give a shit about your medal, because I knew you before you were a mathematical god. Blame me for how your life turned out. It's not my fault. I don't blame you. It's not about you, you Dude, mathematical Dude, he's like being a narcissist dick. to it's him. It's about the boy. He is. He's a good kid, and I won't see you fuck him up like you're trying to fuck he's up me He's standing right up for him 100%, and he's trying to shut him. I won't see you him feel like him. a failure, too. He uh -oh. won't be a failure, Sean. But, but if you push him, Jerry, if you Sean, ride him. I am what I am today because I was pushed and because I learned to push myself. He's not you. You guessed that? Come back. Don't come in. Uh, I was just leaving. A lot of that stuff goes back a long way between me and him. What is that? It's your father. Gotta collect himself. Send it back to the judge for evaluation. Yeah. Oh. It's their friendship that's ruined between them. Hey, you're not them. gonna fail me, are you? Have you had any uh, experience with that? 20 years of counseling. Yeah, I've seen some pretty awful shit. I mean, have you had any experience mm. with that? Personally. Yeah, I have. Sure ain't good. My father was an alcoholic. Mean fucking drunk. Come home hammered, looking to wail on somebody. So I'd provoke him so he wouldn't go after my mother and little brother. Interesting nights, but when he wore his rings. Oh. Uh, he used to just put a, uh, a wrench, a stick, and a belt on the table and just say, choose. Well, I gotta go with the belt there, Vanna. Uh, I used to go with the wrench. Why the wrench? Because fuck him, that's why. Your foster father. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what is it, like, Will has an attachment disorder? Is it all that stuff? Fear of abandonment? Is that why, uh... Is that why I broke up with Skyler? I didn't know you had. I did. You want to talk about it? No. Hey, Will. I don't know a lot. You see this? Holy shit. This is not your fault. Look at me, son. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. I know. No, no, you don't. It's not Wait. your fault. I know. It's not your fault, all right? It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Don't fuck with me. It's not your fault. Don't fuck with me, all right? Don't fuck with me, Sean. Not you. It's not your fault. Mm. <laughs> it's not your fault. Is that what he was holding on to? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's partially his friends he's holding on to because that's the only people he ever knew and partially the he had guilt of his past that he 
partly blamed on himself for feeling like he wasn't worth anything, or not worth anything going forward, so he always thought the people he let into his life would find out that he wasn't worth or discover that he wasn't worth what he was. Like pushes everyone away. Let people get close enough to leave them. Feel that. No one would have to ever feel that. Which one did you take? I was over at uh, McNeil. It's one of the jobs the professor set me up with. Um, I haven't told him yet, but I went, I went down there and I talked to my boss and my new boss. He seemed like a good guy. Is that what you want? Yeah, you know, I think so. Good for you. Congratulations. Thanks. Huh, good for him. Time's yep. up. Really? So that's so that's it? So we're, we're done? Yeah, that's it. You're done. You're a free man. What does a free man mean? He doesn't have to come to these therapies I, anymore. I just want you to know, Sean, that you're welcome, Will. Did it. So, you know, I... Uh, they helped each other. touch, you know. Me too. I'll be traveling around a bit, and it'll be a little hard. I've got an answering machine at the college I'll be checking in with. So, you know, Give us call that. Please. I'll get back to you right away. Yeah, you know, I figured I'm just gonna put my money back on the table and see what kind of cards I get. You do what's in your heart, son, you'll be fine. Thank you, Sean. Uh, thank All you, that bullshit. It is violate the uh, patient-doctor relationship. Uh, only if you grab my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. You too. Yeah. Hey, good luck, son. Two bits. What's up? Did you guys go? I had to talk him down. Two bits. That one guy don't. I know hey, that asshole. guy just bust each other's balls, Happy but they're birthday. always putting him down. Stella forgot, huh, bitch? Yeah. Come on. He's like. Oh, yeah, that's. Right. Who's that's first? Because he's like. Who's first? Who's first? Come on. Who's first? Who's your present? Come on, Rod. What? Oh, uh, we knew you had to get back and forth to Cambridge for your new job, and I knew I wasn't gonna fucking drive you every day, so. Fucking kid. Logan wanted to get you a tea pass. That's not what I was saying. But, uh, 21 now, so. You're legally allowed to drink, so we figured the best thing for you, kid, was a car. How do you like it? Wait, this they all like... pull together? It's the ugliest fucking car I ever seen in my life. <laughs> Come on, bro. How'd you guys do this? You know, we and Bill scraped together wow. the pots, and uh, Morgan was out panhandling for change every day. <laughs> I had the rotor to do all the body work. Yeah, I have a fucking job, too, brother. You guys been up my ass for two years about a job. I had to let him up with the car. So you finally got a job, huh, Morgan? Yeah, I had one. Now I'm fucked again. So what is it? A lawnmower? What do you got? That's a straight fucking six. Me and Bill rebuilt this engine ourselves, Sam. It's a good car, dude. The engine's good. The engine's good. <laughs> Happy 21, Will. Happy they did 21. it all for him. I couldn't ask for better friends than that. Come on. For everything. Yeah. Sure. Oh, we have I, this fuckhead um, now. Me too, Jerry. Yeah. Good. I heard you're taking some time. Yeah. Travel a little bit. Maybe right. So where are you going? India and China and Baltimore. It's <laughs> true. Oh. You know when you'll be back? Yeah. Class of 72 is having a reunion in six months? Yeah, I got one of those too. Why don't you come? I'll buy you a drink. Drinks at those things are free. I know, Jerry. I was being ironical. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How about a drink right now? Yeah, it's a good idea. Come on, this one's on me. It's about as big a chance as you will be hit by lightning here in the staircase. It's like the only time. They've actually like. I mean, they I'm, were friends. It's but just like calmly talking and joking. Yeah, just over the years, have done their own thing. And stuff happened to them. Mm. Can, remember when he talked about that ten seconds? It's yeah. the best part. Yeah. yeah. Of course, remember, but I just. What? Oh, good. What an emotional roller coaster. He listened to you. <laughs> he realized it. I'm sure that's a wonderful feeling. I mean, they are friends, but more than that, they want the best for each other. Each other. He did it. Not there. Sean, 
if the professor calls about that job, just tell him, sorry. I had to go see about a girl. Will. So stole my life. <laughs> <laughs> California. Oh boy. I was like going through therapy myself. Because there was so much advice and stories about each other. And it was very emotional. John was the one, in my opinion, not force him to break it down, but let him come to on his own terms, but to re to show Will that he wasn't messing around, but also gave him the support in a strict way that he needed to get to the point where he is at currently. Yeah. Both there for each other, in mm -hmm. a way, to move on, to get past. The girl he's going to see now was a challenge for him. But it was just because of his past. Yes. Because of his fear that people would figure him out and figure out that he was all of the things that everyone made him feel up until this point. He was going to be thrown away. So was he hunting for his inner peace? Hunting for... What was good, what he needed, that's what it sounded like. He was on a path. He's hunting for himself to be who he needs to be, be able to have any meaningful relationships and to move on from where he was. He found a home with his friends and his, he didn't go to work, come back, going through the routine of life, not expanding away from that to figure out anything else. In oh, his life. So he was living in comfort. He, he was living not testing himself. In I would I wouldn't say comfort. I would say he's living in a fortress he built around him. Oh. He found the people who would do him right and he knew that they would be loyal to him, not leave. They were good to him. He had a good relationship with them. And then he saw that. He's I've never had this before. And I'm comfortable staying here. So he built the fortress mm -hmm. around this and everything else, every other person, every other whatever, he would not let them in or in. Set and up. if they tried to come in, like the therapist did, he would fight them. I feel like he was constantly fighting the teacher, the professor. The Arthur. math guy? Yes, the, the math guy. Sean, you're not doing good enough. You're not going fast enough. Because he decided to settle down with his wife, and because his wife got sick, one of the two friends had a better career, and he put that above everything. And he saw Sean, who was, his wife died, he had nothing going for him besides, like, the college, which isn't bad, but, like, up in the, the level they were at, he would go to the reunions at their college and be like, oh, that's the guy who didn't succeed as much as everyone else. All of us. So they felt bad for him. And he didn't want their pity. He doesn't want their pity. Well, now that, okay, now I understand where that is. The math guy is also arrogant because he carries around his medal like it is the biggest thing ever. And it's like it everyone cool. looks up to him. He doesn't have his life together besides his career. He doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have anything else going on. He doesn't assistant. have, and Robin Williams looks at that and was like, all you have is this accomplishment. I lived my life the way I wanted to, and so did the professor, but how how are you to judge me for what I decided to do with my life? And I felt like he was judging him a lot by how he was dealing, coaching Will, pushing him, saying, oh, you're not doing this way. I, I need him to be this way. I need you to do this. He's, yeah, because he, he didn't need care. Something else, but he didn't care how he was doing. He wanted it a specific way. Because he was emotionally gone he the math guy is emotionally not he's not like a relationship kind of person he's pragmatic my career what i'm doing with my career what difference is it making in my field this he doesn't care about having a relationship or it doesn't mean anything to him being mentally well doesn't mean anything to him because he has all these things he's i'm fine i'm great but at least that's how i see it and now, I, I, I do see that now when you're breaking it down. I see that before I just saw him looking out for himself only, but starting his entire life around becoming a legend, someone knowing him, going out with someone. Well, that's what he valued. Him. Yeah. 
He didn't value. He didn't value his knowledge and. Which is nothing wrong. wrong with that. I'm not. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just yeah, saying but that... the the way he carries himself. Yes. Now that he has the Fields Medal, and now that he is working at MIT, and all these things, how he carries himself and makes Sean feel like he is lesser because he doesn't, he didn't live up to, so he always looks down or feels pity for him. Where Robin Williams thinks, I did everything I wanted exactly how I wanted to do it, and I'm happy with it. I wouldn't do anything different. He doesn't regret anything. Like this Where was... the professor is the opposite. He achieved everything, but he regrets not being more. He regrets not getting higher. Where Sean's, Robin Williams' character, didn't achieve everything, but he doesn't regret a thing. Which is a, a way healthier way to think yes. about things. I wouldn't have done it differently. Robin Williams is a perfect person to do, because he's a comedian, was a comedian, can speak in terms where you understand him, but very nice how he says everything. He knows how to speak. He's a he was a comedian. If I would ever have a therapist, I want would want it to be. Yeah, they it's don't the work way like he that. Just, though. I know therapists don't work like that. Sean, like he said it when he was there, he's like, I teach it. I don't know how to do it. Where but he did do therapists it don't share like the first five of them, right? Like how the first five, that's how, like, they, they, they yeah, they're all wrong. Business. That's how therapists are. And I understand you can't be personal with the person you're doing yeah, therapy on. Be, they, I feel that they should, the previous ones should have done a little bit something different than just, okay, he's here. Let's just get this over with. I'll give you a try. Nope, not working. They, they should have done something else. But ultimately, it... they're going. He was going to probably therapists that were like the best therapists that had like methods of how to do therapy, and their methods were not getting through to Will. Where Sean was from his neighborhood, from Boston, he wasn't like he knew his background a little bit more. He came at it as like a more understanding way, where he's trying to f just talk to him as a person to get level with him where therapists don't at least in a, in a, in my experience therapists don't try to level with you in real life they they sort of let you figure it out by leading you somewhere they they tell you they just sort of lead you to a conclusion that you can realize what's happening is because of this they don't tell you, oh, your problem is this. They don't. Therapists don't do that. Therapists help you realize what's wrong. And then try and guide you to the in the right direction. Because you need to figure it out. Not the therapist is just there to help you figure it out. Whereas in this, they just sort of talked. They talked about their life. He got to know him more. Yes. And he came to trust him. And that's what Will needed to break him down was to trust Sean. And when he trusted him, he would let him in more. Really, Sean wasn't a therapist. He was more of a mentor or a father yeah. that he needed. It felt like that, especially at the end. A lot of people need a mentor figure. Mm -hmm. Someone who maybe isn't a parent, but like... Someone for them. Someone who's in their corner, like helping them along the way. That could be professionally. It could be... In life, just someone to, an older person to help balance you out with their knowledge of the whole process that you haven't experienced yet. <clears throat> I feel like at one point, Will's, was he like the oldest one in the group at the job site, at the car, when they were drinking the beer, he's, he's he gave like, his, his speech. The he, one that's always driving. I feel like he was... He's the oldest, yeah. Yes. I feel like he was also the ending to will finally getting that drive he needed anything from, from Sean. he heard it from her and then he heard it from the person who's there every single day with him since it, he was younger he realized he thought it was him pushing him away at first and he's like i don't understand like we're having a good time we're we're just doing what we do normally yeah i, I don't understand what's changed and he realizes at the end he's like he's not pushing me away he just wants the best for me yeah because he realizes that I am different. 
and I can't I can't hide from the fact it's a coming of age movie. So when I first watched it, it became my favorite movie just because I was at that age. Well, I watched it when I was 13, but like I really got the meaning when I was like 19, 20, 21 when I watched it again. Not like it's a similar experience, but you you feel that way as like a young adult where you, you have all this stuff happening and you build walls. It helps people understand and this movie is so popular because it helps people understand those things in a way that makes it comfortable for them. I feel like the same process of a young person watching this movie is the same process Will goes through where he realizes those mm, things. I see that. So the movie is very, very therapeutic yes. in that way. Yes, you took the words out of my mouth. Therapeutic, very. Where you realize things about yourself. It is a coming of age movie. It probably would have been a great movie for me to watch when I had moved out and I had oh. faced the world. Because, you know, my upbringing was very different from what I have now. But yeah. it would have been a lot easier for me to do, have someone like Sean in my life. Yeah. To I, guide me through things. I didn't have any. Life. When I was growing up and I was like, I moved out, moved to a city. I didn't know anyone. And I just made my way because the place where I was at was not the place I wanted to stay. And I was the opposite will in a, in a way where I didn't, I had friends where I was, but I, I didn't see my life going anywhere or doing anything where I was. So I was like, okay, I'm going to move away somewhere. I don't know somewhere. I don't know anyone. And that experience helps you learn real quick. I didn't have a mentor or anything. I figured it out on my own. And you go to college and I start working and you figure out how to do relationships and you don't have no one to fall back on. It's like you can you. call family and be like, yeah, this is what's happening. But they don't really, they don't see it and they don't know it. So you have to figure it out on your own. And doing that for, I think I did, I was out there for six years and met you there. That's after relationship. Will is not working. And you, a movie like this helps you in those times yes. where you are, you're out there and you're, and it, it is. Makes you realize what you it are. It makes you realize a lot of things you're not looking at and not seeing. And it's a, just a very good movie all over. Yes, it is. One of my top favorite. It yep. was very, 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 very good. Ratings. High 90s. And I'm sticking with it. The nice. more I think about it. Yeah. Just the bits and the pieces and the flow of how everyone impacted his life. Because I could talk about this for a while and no one wants to hear me ramble on stuff. I'm going to say anyways, but very, very therapeutic. It was beautifully written. It's a, like I said, it's coming of age yes. type movie where my rating, if I were to rate this movie in my 20s, 21, that time period when I watched it again. I would probably give it a 99. Mm -hmm. I think it's my one highest, highest rating. I'm also older now. And I realize that as you get older, your thoughts on things change. As I'm getting older, I feel further and further away from the person I was. I feel more distant from that person. That's a good way to put it. You, you change. Your yeah. bias towards things change. Your ideas towards things change. Things don't affect you as much as they did when I was 20. Today, what I'm saying, my rating is probably like a 96, just because it's still an amazing movie. Back then, it hit me so much harder than it does today. It still does. Don't get me wrong. A 96 is a perfection movie this was in phenomenal, our rating. Though. And I think the only movie above this I've rated on the channel so far is a 98 I gave for Shawshank Redemption, which is a better movie than this overall. This movie... Once in my life was a 99, though. I'm just trying to be real with you and give you the solid facts. 96 is still, like I said, a perfection level movie. To me, in our to me ratings. first watching it, it's very almost 98, 98, 99. But this is my first time. But if I would watch it again the next, like how you did, you watched it 15 years ago. Maybe things would be different for me. 15 watching years it. ago for the first time. And then yeah, exactly. About and if 10 I watch years it again, ago. For the second time, and I've probably watched it once more between this and now. Since I watched it last, Robin Williams has committed suicide. Beautiful soul, rest in peace. Which is 
beyond watching this movie and knowing what he was to people and how how much he helped people, it's just very That's disheartening terrible. to know that he couldn't find someone to help him or no one was there to help him. Our cats are here. All right. Thank you. Artemis, get off. I, I didn't talk about in the beginning, so I'll talk about it at the end. But the last few weeks, my computer died. So the scenes are going to be different than they normally are. I had to remake all of them. That was a lot of work to re get everything working is a good way to put it. Um, a lot of things happened though. In the last three or four. Stuff's happened. It's been a little busy and we rise up. Mm -hmm. well. You had your, your heart monitor put in and that was not oh. a long recovery pretty much the entire time. Yes. We've been gone just recently. You've gotten better. Yeah. We're, we're going to do weekly videos again, hopefully weekly, if not every other week. I'd just forward. like to thank everyone for sticking around, for being there, for not just ditching us. It's I, very appreciated. I didn't we've, think. We've lost in these last three weeks, we've lost only five subscribers. It's just crazy. I'm very, very thankful that you guys are still here. But we've That's gained more than we've lost, mm -hmm. too. So we're not down. We're up still. We got content on the channel. It's just... And I put out shorts just to... Give you guys something. Well, widen the net. Because mm -hmm. some people just watch shorts. And, uh, yes. Besides that, we got the Patreon, for those who don't know. We got the YouTube join. We got the different tiers for that, so... If you're interested in that, check it out. We got watch along style videos, which you need a copy of. And we got longer form reactions of YouTube cut, which are just from a few minutes to as much as 30 minutes longer on the YouTube, on the extended cut on Patreon. So you get more in the reaction on Patreon. And, and I tell them what I have been working on here and there. Sure. For you lovely fellers and ladies, I have been working on a special project. Oh, yeah. Yes. It is not done yet, but within the next couple of weeks, there will be a finished product, and I'm very, very excited to show you what I've been working on. I'm very excited. Yes. If you want to, for those of you who don't know, we own a business on top of this where we manufacture and sell candles. I'll put her Etsy link in the bottom. So if you like candles <laughs> or wax melts, they're or all anything organic. Like that, I, I take a lot of pride and joy and passion into it. And but I if just you wanted don't, to give you guys something. Yeah, we're making a set. We do different scents, different times of the year. We're doing Christmas scents now. And we have a bunch of custom scents that are all year long. We got all sorts of stuff. So if you're interested in that, if you're not, yeah, whatever. Don't, don't feel obligated. Doesn't matter. I just want to give you guys something. In. Doesn't matter at all. We're doing a scent for the channel. Yes, that's what I'm working on. And we'll have it. We'll preview it at some point. Yes. But thank you for watching. Immersive reactions. Until next time. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. It helps us get recognition on our videos and we'll react to more in the future. Thank you.